Hey guys, welcome to the ND72 YouTube channel, and this is my CLK55. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. It's Adam with ND72. So today we got the motor out of the buggy. This is the 420 motor Predator that I got from Harbor Freight not too long ago. We haven't ran it, we haven't drove it yet. So it's, we ran into a little bit of an issue when I put it in the buggy where the intake was hitting. So you know what that means? Time to get some go fast parts. So what we're going to be doing today is going to be adding some more power. There's a few people who say this adds about like 5, 6 horsepower. Some people say 2, 3. Some people say 10. We're just going to say, I don't know, 10 is a rough estimate. So, well, a little bit like 7. We'll say 7. So this will hopefully make this a 20 horsepower motor. Not 100% sure. Don't quote me on that. i never done this before. I'm just seeing what I read on the internet. So the main plan for this is I got a little kit from Amazon. This is a stage 1 kit. A lot of other places sell like Go Power Sports so on and so forth. It comes with the intake, so instead of my intake sitting so high up, now it should be down low so I have plenty of clearance to the buggy. It also comes with a whole little kit of a fuel filter, a series of gaskets, hardware, jets, and a spark plug. I might not be using all this, and I might. It also has the bracket for, I think it's for a throttle cable, I'll have to look into that. And then the adapter, this is the big thing you need is the adapter. So, not that bad, hopefully it'll be pretty easy. We're also going to be, most likely, 98% moving the governor off of this unit. That way I can get a little bit more RPM, and hopefully a lot more power. Because it should be relatively easy. This whole job you should be able to do with a few drill bits, taps, and hand tools. So we're going to start knocking it out, and see how hard it is. Alright, so to start this off, we're going to start removing the air box. There should be three bolts, and they're 10s. So it should be the two right here. You got one right there. And then once you remove this little filter, there's another one directly up top in here. Now this whole thing should wiggle out. Supposedly. Oh, I forgot one thing. There's two hoses in the back. Let me show you. Right there. So we're going to unhook this, and then there's a hose right there, but I don't think that's necessary. So let me just go unhook that real quick. All right, now you get that back hose off, it just slides right out. And that's your intake. So if you also notice, I have a brand new Predator. So the brand new Predators have the different type of filter up top, which is flat. And they actually come with this nicer, better gasket, so you don't have to really buy these anymore. The old ones came with like a paper one, so that's a big bonus. So hopefully the rest of this kit will still work. Okay, now that you got that off, make sure you have this new, cool, proper gasket, like I said. And so my Amazon one, if you see the holes, are actually staggered. So it's not like you can put it on this way and that way. So I'm going to look and see which way I actually got to go, then I'll tell you. I'm just going to line it up and see which one clears it the best. So right there, that is with that dot hole up top. Oh, 100% dot hole top. Let me see if I can get in there and show you the difference. Look at that with the dot hole on the bottom. I can literally see my finger through the other side. And then when you flip it. Come on, see the lookers get in there. Bam. Perfect seal. So dot hole up top. And then you just put your nuts back on. And that should be pretty good. All right, now that you can see with this adapter on, the filter literally slides right on. So it has a little bit of a bend to it. So I don't know if I need up, down, or to the side yet. So we're going to leave it off until I actually get it onto the chassis. But that one's in there pretty good. The next thing to do, which I'm going to have to look up a little bit better, it came with two jets. You should be changing out the jets. And we're going to show you to do that too right now. All right, next we're going to do the jet. So right here is the bowl. So this is just a 10 mil right on the bottom. with a little gasket. Make sure you don't drop the bowl like I literally just did. <laughs> so put that to the side and then in here should just be a flathead screwdriver and you'll pull the jet right out.
Make sure you don't drop that. I keep dropping stuff by doing it behind the camera. All right, so once you get the jet in, you guys basically are gonna take your bowl, put it right back on, get your 10 mil, and thread it right back in. This is a very, very easy performance mod to do. And anyone almost could do it at home. You can't really mess it up. I mean, I bet someone can, so don't quote me on that. I'm not liable if you do F this up. But there you go. So, one thing I did not show you. So, this little bracket you get. Before you put this little adapter on, thread the bolt in there. And this is actually a choke holder. So, now your choke won't fall off. So, I got the bolt kind of loose because it has a little bit of adjustment. So, I'm going to adjust it perfectly for mine and then tighten it right back up. That is a super cool little thing because I thought I had to drill this out because normally if you don't have it, I don't know if I can even show you anymore, but the choke will actually fall right off. But now, it sits right in there, so I'm going to tighten up this bolt up. I think it's an 8, and then we'll go from there. All right, now we're going to start taking our, like, torque converter and clutch setup. So, for mine, it's a 13 there and a 27 there. And I'm going to try to move the whole assembly with the belt and everything straight off and then worry about the bracket. All right, now I'm just going to remove my 4 or 10 mil for the adapter plate. should be pretty straightforward. And then we'll start getting into the actual motor. All right, now that we're going to do our casing to start removing, we're doing the governor at this point. So I'm going to start removing the case first for me. Uh, make sure you always first drain your oil. This is a brand new motor, so it should have a little bit of oil in it, but not that much. So these should be 10 mils. It's going boom, boom, boom. Then I'm going to pull this case off. Be very careful because there is a gasket back here. So if it's not a brand new motor, you might want to order the gaskets over here. But brand new, I should really be fine because I never ran it. Should just wiggle right off because I'm brand new. Just be careful with the gasket in the back. Don't pull unless you're all with it. There we go. I got the casing off. The gasket's pretty good. And you see I'm leaking oil, so I'm going to get some rags really quick and clean that up. All right, now that you got the case off to start removing the governor, you need to remove this piece over here. So what I'm going to do is going to take my snips and snip around this. So then these little flaps can open up and I can pull this whole thing out. So now you got these broken off and opened up. You could open these arms more and then remove this piece on the inside. You don't need that anymore. And then this should come off. Oh, wait, I forgot. There's actually a clip right down there that you just need to get a screwdriver and pry out. So I broke away a lot of my ends because it's all trash. Once you start getting it up, it should pull straight up. Ooh, a couple little pieces. Put them in there. And then you got a washer down here. You got to get that off too. There you go. And then I'm going to take brake clean and clean this whole area off because I think I got some debris in here maybe. But we'll clean it all off before we put it on. All right, next we got to get this government arm out because we're not going to be using it anymore. So take that little nut off. Get that out of the way. Undo these springs. Let me put the camera down under these springs and pull the arm off. All right, next you got this little cotter pin that you got to get out. Just be careful. Don't like fling it and hit someone in the head with it. Just be a little gingerly. Got it right out. And then this rod for the governor could come out from the inside the motor. So it sits right in here. It's going to take a little bit of time of wiggling for you to just like bang it around. Well, not bang it around, but just wiggle it out so you can clear it. Also, to help get this out, move the piston because if the piston is too much uh, in this way, just rotate it counterclockwise. And then this arm will come right out, and that's trash. So also, up in here, there is a little washer that's, like, greased in there. So make sure you grab that out and then put all that stuff to the side. You really shouldn't need it anymore, but just in case, put it to the side for now. And the next thing we're going to be doing is putting a crap little paper towels in there, and we're going to get a bolt in there. So next, we're going to tap this to three-eighths of an inch. I put the paper towels in there, kind of like a little catcher, so I don't have to pull the whole guts of the motor and make sure everything's clean. So that should catch a lot of the debris. So we're just going to tap it all out, and then I can shove a bolt in there to seal it up. So I'm definitely going to put the camera down on this one so I can do it straight. If you could see, I'm trying to see on camera, but all my debris is basically falling in this little catch thing, and then it goes boop, 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 and landing right there on my table. So this little thing's working pretty, pretty well. Also, I forgot to say, before you start tapping, pull the factory gasket out. That way you could reuse it for your bolt. 
So I'm just going to keep going all the way down, keep going back and forth, get it all clean, and throw a bolt in. All right, we got the bolt in there, and I put a few washers as to help sandwich that gasket. So not bad. That's a, I did it to a 3 8 16. So you can do a 3 8 24, but 3 8 16 works pretty good, and it's almost the perfect size. You're not dropping down out of there into the actual engine. And the next thing we're going to do is get rid of this uh, low oil sensor. So the only reason, well, a few reasons I'm going to do this is for when you're going off-roading, the oil will slosh around, and you don't want to actually trip it out. And uh, then you just keep stalling out on the trail if you're on a hard incline or something. So I'm going to pull this out, but do know once you pull this out, you'll delete the whole safety of if you go low on oil, blow on your motor. So make sure if you do do this, full disclosure, check your oil often. Also, the added teeny benefit of taking this out, you add a little bit more oil because you're removing that from inside the crankcase. So we're going to pull it out. And it's pretty easy. It should just be two like bolts right there. Pull it right out. And then we're going to deal with wiring in the back. So you got the oiler hanging down there. These were just two 8 mils. And then you're going to have to take off the wiring part of it. So what you're going to do is right over here, you'll take that 8 mil off. And then crank this nut out. And then you should be able to get all your wiring and clean up all this. All right, now that we got all that stuff out, we're going to tap this bolt to a 7 16. So we're going to tap at 7 16 and then throw a bolt in there with a gasket. One thing you got to remember is don't pick a bolt too long or you actually protrude out and start hitting crap in there. So we'll tap it out and then I'll start checking some bolts. All right, so we got the bolt in. So I got brass crush oil washer. And if you can see how much it goes in there, boom. Bam. It's not that much. And I can rotate the engine and we're not hitting. See, it doesn't clip anything in there, so we're good. I'll make sure your cam don't fall out. Tap it in if it does. So we should be good with the oiler. I'm going to clean up all this stuff, put that back. I swung it out of the way to give me more clearance. So we're going to pull all that back. And then double make sure you clean all this, whatever might have accidentally fell in there. Clean that up really, really well. Once you got it basically cleaned off, throw the cover back on. Make sure that your ends are kind of clean for any of the uh, like debris. Make sure you get all that metal out. If you did drop any, throw your cover back on, and then we should be done all inside the motor for this governor. This was just basically the governor remover, so we could spin it faster and go a little bit more power out of it. So this is basically everything you take out for the oil lever sensor. Just so you know, that's all just going to be trash. We just case it in a Ziploc bag because we didn't damage anything when we removed it, so it could all still be put back. Now, once you got the cover back on to make sure you got no binding, I just take vice grips, not really crank that hard down, and just spin it. These motors go counterclockwise, so just make sure you could go pretty easily. As you can see, I'm just doing it with my fingers, like barely spinning it. No binding, no nothing. And then now you can start redressing your motor. So now we got the motor completely put back together from top to bottom. So I'm going to have to mess with my actual throttle, but that's going to be different for everyone. So I want to actually put it in the cart to actually do that a little bit better. That way, because from what everyone's telling me is now the, the throttle's flipped. So now... I um, think this is gas, and that's going to be no throttle, so I'll have to figure it out, and I'm going to get these arms, but I want to throw it in the car to make sure that I do even clear over here now, because that was one of the big things of why we did some of this stuff. All right, so here's the motor in now, and wow, you have so much more clearance here. I have no problem about that hitting the filter like it was before, but the only thing I kind of do see that might be a little issue, maybe I'll just put like a little piece of metal over here, just if debris is flying up, it might just hit that filter. It might have been better if the filter stuck out like that. But for how inexpensive the Amazon setup was and everyone basically has this angle, it's really not that bad. It's looking pretty, pretty cool. I still want to see how, how this is going to sound with basically a header with a factory muffler on it and now an intake and a jet. So not bad, not bad at all. It's coming along pretty, we'll be riding it pretty, pretty soon. And then I do got to figure out the throttle setup. I want to fire it up and actually verify that people will write that which way goes which way now before I do anything crazy. So if you guys liked the video, on this video we got the motor installed and all that stuff. So we are going to be doing the next video. We're going to be firing up, bolting it in, adding a battery, getting it all key start, fire it up and see how this bad boy actually sounds. But right now we're going to end the video there. That way it's not too long for you guys. But I hope you guys like these little go-kart videos. If you don't, don't worry. The Mercedes contact is coming back. This was just a little side project I had that I thought was fun. And if you guys do like this, throw a comment down, throw a like down, subscribe. I have plenty of other like go fast Mercedes, off-road Mercedes. And then we're going to still do this buggy just because I think it's kind of interesting and fun. So next video we will fire it up, hear how it sounds, but catch you guys later.